Good morning, all participants. Your meeting is ready to begin. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Yellow Pages Fourth Quarter 2019 Earnings Release Call. Today's conference call contains forward-looking information about Yellow Pages' outlook, objectives, and strategy. These statements are based on assumptions and are subject to important risks and uncertainties. Yellow Pages' actual results could differ materially from expectations discussed. The details of Yellow Pages caution regarding, regarding forward-looking information, including key assumptions and risks, can be found in Yellow Pages Management Discussion and Analysis of the Fourth Quarter of 2019. This call is being recorded and webcast, and all of the disclosure documents are available on the company's website and on SEDAC. I would now like to turn the meeting over to Mr. David Eckert, President and Chief Executive Officer. Please go ahead, sir. Thank you. Uh, good morning, everyone, and thank you for uh, joining us uh, on our fourth quarter call. We appreciate your uh, interest in our company. As usual, I'd like to start with some overview comments, uh, and then Franco Chinamblo, our Chief Financial Officer, will describe our fourth quarter and full year results in a little more detail. And then after that, we will endeavor to answer all of your questions. Um, in summary, uh, we're pretty happy with our continued progress in the fourth quarter and the full year 2019. Uh, we finished the year with uh, EBITDA at 40% of our revenue, uh, which is uh, uh, world-class levels uh, in the legacy Yellow Pages business. EBITDA minus CapEx was 38% of revenue. Uh, we're also very happy with the cash generation, uh, not unrelated, uh, of the business. Um, during the uh, last eight quarters, uh, we have been able to reduce our net debt by more than $300 million. Uh, a piece of that we've been able to pay off, uh, as we predicted we would last time we spoke with you guys. Uh, we paid in full our senior notes in, in the month of December 2019, originally $350 million, $315 excuse me, million dollars, uh, which was paid uh, three years ahead of maturity. Uh, and our net debt at the end of December down to only $54 million. Uh, we're also pleased with the continued progress of bending the revenue curve. Uh, each and every quarter during 2019, uh, we saw an improvement uh, over the previous quarter on the, of the uh, rate of change compared to prior year in our, in our revenue. So we're making concrete steps based on uh, real progress, and we're we're pretty uh, happy about that, and pretty uh, optimistic about the continuation of that progress. Um, that is because uh, even though we are generating uh, uh, a good deal of cash, we uh, believe we're making all of the sensible investments in the business to continue to make progress, bending the revenue curve, and building uh, an ever more stable uh, situation and company uh, for all of our constituents. Um, one example of that is uh, we're uh, in the process of expanding our, our sales force, our telesales force. Uh, we see opportunities there, and, um, and, and so we're in no way hesitating to make any and all investments that we think are sensible in the business. Uh, we're also um, announcing today uh, that we intend to fully pay off all of our remaining interest-bearing debt, uh, which is our exchangeable debentures, on or about May 31st, 2021, uh, which is the first time we can do so without a premium. Uh, we would do that um, at, uh, at par, and uh, after that we would have uh, no debt, uh, no interest-bearing debt remaining uh, uh, in the company. Uh, we also are announcing that we intend to initiate a regular quarterly dividend on our stock, uh, effective the second quarter of this year, the second quarter of 2020, uh, in the amount of 11 cents per share per quarter. Um, and uh, just in summary, we're feeling uh, good about what we see uh, our progress having been. We're feeling good about what we see as the opportunities continuing going forward, and uh, uh, we really like where we are. So let me shift, uh, hand the microphone to Franco Shinamblo, our CFO, for some more details on the uh, quarter, and then we'll answer your questions. Thank you. Thanks, David. Good morning, everyone. 
Uh, let me take you through our financial results for the fourth quarter and the December 31st, 2019 now. Um, as you will recall, we report our operations now in two segments. The first segment is the YP segment, which provides small and medium-sized businesses across Canada digital and traditional marketing solutions. The second segment is the other segment, which includes the operations of businesses we have disposed of or liquidated this year and over 2018. Since last quarter, we no longer have any operations in the other segment, so the current Q4 results are made up entirely of the YP segment and is where my comments uh, will be more focused. Uh, so on revenues, YP segment revenues decreased by 17.3 million or 15.6% year over year and amounted to 93.5 million. This represents a 1% improvement versus the 16.6% year over year decline we recorded in Q3. And as David mentioned, marks the fourth consecutive quarter that the year over year rate of revenue change has improved. The revenue decrease for the quarter is mainly due to the decline of our higher margin YP digital media and print products and to a lesser extent, our lower margin digital services products. Uh, this has created pressures and continues to create pressures on our margins. In terms of YP digital revenues, it decreased 15.2% year over year and amounted to 70.2 million. The revenues were adversely impacted by decline in, in the number of digital customers, partially offset by a sixth consecutive quarter of higher spend per customer. The lower digital customer count is mostly attributable to a lower level of acquisition, driven in part by our focus on profitability. YP print revenues decreased by 16.8% year over year to 23.3 million from a decline in the number of print customers and lower spend per customer. On adjusted EBITDA, the consolidated adjusted EBITDA for the quarter decreased by 6.4 million or 15.5% and amounted to 34.8 million. The adjusted EBITDA margin for the quarter increased to 37.2% from 33.0% for the same period last year. This decrease in the consolidated adjusted EBITDA was the result of the revenue pressures in the YP segment, as well as the divestitures in the other segment. Adjusted EBITDA for the YP segment for the quarter decreased by 4.1 million, or 10.5%, as a result of lower overall revenues, pressures from the change in product mix, and investments in both customer care and new customer acquisition. The adjusted EBITDA margin for the YP segment for the quarter increased to 37.2% from 35.1% for the same period last year. The increase in adjusted EBITDA margin is due to the revenue pressures and investments in both customer care and new customer acquisition being more than offset by our cost reductions. On adjusted EBITDA less capex, uh, it decreased by 4.3 million or 11.7% to 32.8 million, mainly due to lower adjusted EBITDA, partially offset by decreased spending on software development. Adjusted EBITDA less CapEx margin increased to 35.1% as compared to 29.8% for the same period last year as a result of the cost reductions in the YP segment, as well as the divestiture of, of unprofitable or non-synergistic businesses and revenues in the other segment. Our total workforce is now comprised of YP segment employees only and amounts to 768 active employees as of December 31st, 2019. This represents a decrease versus the same time last year of 24% overall and of 20% for the YP segment alone. The company recorded restructuring other charges of 5.7 million for the quarter, consisting mainly of charges relating to workforce reductions. On net earnings, we recorded net earnings of 53.6 million during the quarter as compared to 40 million during the same period of last year. The improvement in net earnings is mainly due to decreased depreciation and amortization expense from lower software development expenditures, lower financial charges from a reduced level of indebtedness and higher recovery of income taxes, partially offset by the lower adjusted EBITDA and an increase in restructuring and other charges. On December 2nd, 2019, as previously announced and as alluded to by David, the company made a mandatory redemption payment of $50.3 million toward the principal amount on its senior secured notes. With this payment, the company has now repaid the notes in full three years ahead of maturity. As for the exchangeable debentures, and also as David announced earlier, we intend to accumulate cash in order to fully repay them at par on or shortly after May 31st, 2021. This indenture does permit the company to make restricted payments 
including payment of dividends and common stock buyback in an, in an aggregate amount not to exceed $20 million. To this date, the company has made no such restricted payments. On this note, and also as David announced earlier, the company intends to initiate a regular quarterly dividend of $0.11 cents per common share per quarter beginning in the second quarter of 2020. On net debt excluding lease obligation, the company's uh, is, uh, amount is now reduced by approximately $130 million to $54 million compared to $182 million as of December 31, 2018, and our cash position as of December 31, 2019 stood at $44.4 million. This concludes our formal remarks. Thank you for taking the time to join us this morning. We will now take your questions. <coughs> Thank you. We will now take questions from the telephone lines. If you have a question and you're using a speakerphone, please lift your handset before making your selection. If you have a question, please press star 1 on your telephone keypad. If at any time you wish to cancel your question, please press the pound sign. Please press star 1 at this time if you have a question. There will be a brief pause while the participants register for questions. Thank you for your patience. Once again, please press star 1 on your telephone keypad if you have a question. And the first question is from Paul Tepish with High Rock. Please go ahead. Your line is now open. Thank you. Uh, congratulations. Great quarter. Uh, quick question on um, your dividend. Uh, that's a great sign. Is there, two, well, two-part question. Would you increase your dividend if you are able to bend the revenue curve and continue on this path? And second part is, would you look at share buybacks? Um, uh, thanks for the questions. Um, uh, first, we think we are bending the revenue curve. We just want to obviously continue to bend it, um, which is what we absolutely intend to do. We have a lot of things underway uh, moving in that direction, um, and, I, and I think our comments about dividends and so forth um, reflect our uh, our strong commitment uh, in that direction. Um, you know, uh, what we said, uh, we have a limit uh, on what we can do in dividends and share buybacks, as Franco mentioned, uh, in the indenture, in the, uh, the uh, exchangeable debentures. Um, so there is a significant limitation uh, for the next approximately five quarters of uh, cumulatively $20 million yeah, uh, for what that. it really is, is the limit until we until we pay off the, the debentures. Yeah, I'm aware Thereafter, of that. Um, I, excuse me? Yeah, sorry, I'm, I'm aware of that. I meant after going yeah. forward. Thereafter, look, um, uh, uh, I think everything's on the table. Um uh, we'll look around and see what what uh, what the situation is, and um, we have no desire to take uh, cash that is generated by the business and fritter it away uh, on investments that wouldn't otherwise uh, stand up to scrutiny. Uh, we will make every investment that makes sense to make, but um, just because we would have cash in the bank, we don't want it. To uh, to get uh, you know in the guise of investing in the business, sent uh, you know frittered away. Uh, I think our actions so far in the last couple of years have demonstrated that commitment, and so we'd be very open-minded about um, providing uh, cash to um, uh, the relevant constituencies, shall we say? But it, obviously, it'll all depend on what things look like look like at the time. Great. Thanks very much. Good job. Thank you. Thank you. There are no questions registered at this time. I would now like to turn the meeting over to Mr. Eckert. Okay. Well, uh, we're real happy where we are. Um, we appreciate the interest that all you have, and uh, we look forward to talking with you in another 90 days. Thank you very much. Thank you. The conference has now ended.
please just connect your lines at this time. Thank you for your participation.